Okay, this is a problem that we were doing to introduce the concept of friction. And it starts this way. You can have an object on a ramp, an object of mass m, and the ramp has some angle theta with respect to the horizontal, and the mass doesn't slide down. Why? It doesn't slide down because there's a force of friction. And so if we were to draw the free body diagram for that, it looks like there's some force directed back up the ramp the force of friction, gravity, and a normal force. And what we said is that there is a critical angle above which the object will slip if it's steep enough, below which it won't slip if it's less steep. And we can do, we can use this experiment to find the force of static friction or rather find the maximum force of static friction. Because static friction can be whatever it needs to be up until some value. And then it can't provide any more force and that's why the object slips. And it turns out that that maximum value of static friction is proportional to the normal force. So for a critical angle, critical angle say theta subcritical, the force of friction is mu s times the normal force. So when that's true, that means that when we choose axes, say x and y, the sum of the forces in the x direction, and we'll need to take gravity and put it into components, so in the x direction is minus the force of friction, only now we'll write mu s times the normal force plus a component of gravity, mg sine theta. The sum of the forces in the y direction is the normal force minus mg cosine theta. Now right at slipping, right at slipping, the acceleration is zero. This is a bit tricky because after it slips, it turns out that kinetic friction, which then takes over, is usually less than the maximum static friction. So it will actually accelerate after this point. But we can find just that slipping point by setting this equal to zero. OK, so now we can just find a value for mu s in terms of this theta critical. So the thing we don't know and the thing we don't care about is the normal force. So if we use the second equation, the normal force is mg cosine theta critical. And we then substitute that into the top equation, mu s mg cosine theta plus mg sine theta equals 0. Um, so we're solving for mu s, so we get mu s, and we multiply through by minus 1, and we get mg sine theta divided by mg cosine theta. Turns out a lot of things cancel, and what we're left with is tangent theta, which is kind of amazing. What this says is that just the critical angle is what tells you the coefficient of static friction. It doesn't even depend on the mass of the object, which is kind of amazing. So what about kinetic friction? Well, we could do the same thing. We could do another experiment with kinetic friction by finding the angle, a new angle, at which the thing will slide down at constant velocity. In fact, if we did that problem over again, it would look exactly the same, only now we would have mu kinetic and our theta critical has a new definition. It's the angle at which it will slide down at constant speed. That's simply a smaller angle. But I think I'll leave that for a later problem.